Hey folks, welcome back to Let's Play Grand Theft Auto Vice City on the Mysterious JG. I'd like to thank uh, Ravenite for doing the research and finding out that Bark at the Moon just isn't in this game. I guess that song and, and you know, some other songs. Uh, hold on, I've got his comment open somewhere. Uh, oh, no, I don't. No, I had. Yes, I do. Okay. So he says, uh, it was bothering him, so he looked it up. Bark the Moon has been removed along with two... Okay, several songs, but he mentioned two Michael Jackson songs, which I guess... Yeah, I didn't... That didn't register, but yeah, Michael Jackson was all over the, this song, with, or the game before, and uh, unfortunately, I think they probably removed it because of, like, copyright uh, change of hands, uh, and it's just more expensive to license, and probably not because... Uh, uh, Michael Jackson was like a, an insane pederast. <laughs> um, people seem to have just given him a pass on that. But yeah, Bark of the Moon uh, is gone, and Bark of the Moon was my favorite song in the whole soundtrack uh, because a single line about living in a lunar spell uh, caused Bobo and I to have this really stupid joke about how the song is actually about Artemis. <laughs> but anyway, I guess the song's not in the game, so you're not going to get to enjoy it in-game unless I do it myself. Screams break the silence, waking from the dead of night. Vengeance is boiling, he's returned to kill the light. Then when he is found, who is looking for? Listening all, and you hear him. A bark at the moon. Do 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 more instrumental stuff. Years spent in torment, buried in a nameless grave. Now he has risen. Miracles would have to save. Lows that the beast is looking for. Listening all you hear. A bark at the moon. They cursed and buried him along with shame And thought his timeless soul had gone, gone An empty burning hell on holy one but he's written to prove them wrong, so wrong, yeah, baby. And then, then there's the instrumental bit, and then howling in shadows, living in a lunar spell. He finds his heaven, spewing from the mouth of hell. Those that the beast is looking for. Listening on your him A bark at the moon do, 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 do. Hey, 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 a bark at the moon Hey, hey yeah, a bark at the moon Oh, oh, oh yeah, a bark at the moon do, 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 And it continued on just like that And that's the song So, <clears throat> Sorry about that. That obviously wasn't as good as uh, hearing it in the game properly. But that's all I could do. Best I could do. I suppose the best I could do possibly was nothing. Anyway, uh, we're back in Vice City. And um, there is a business uh, that I'd completely forgotten about. Which um, we got to buy. Uh, I have the sound of my TV on. So let me turn that down. I'm still wearing the... Very cool Mr. Versetti suit. Uh, apparently I got a one-star wanted level, which I actually completely blanked on. Oh. Really? Really, sir? I'm not going to fight a cop, because that'll just get us even more of a wanted level. I totally didn't register that, uh, that this was happening. Luckily, the game doesn't care that we have a wanted level while we buy Sunshine Auto. B.J. Smith, and you must be Mr. Bassetti. Would you like the tour? Might as well. Well, you were I'm very me now, Smith. To dealership to y'all. This is my first investment after I turn pro. But now it's time for me to move on. You're leaving town. Not in too much of a hurry, I hope. No, I'm just coming out of retirement and preparing for my future comeback. 
The business wasn't too strong. And don't call it back. I've been here for years. To get a bit more creative with the generation of wealth. Obviously, I could wind down the business before handing it over. Hell, I could burn the place down if I wanted to. Insurance. This is prime development land. Oh, I wouldn't worry about any of that. This place seems perfect. Yeah, it does. So I take it we have a deal. Mm -hmm. And are the cops still after me? Yes, they are. Which will be fun, because now uh, my guys will shoot at the cops. Although, eh, as soon as I say that, my uh, wanted level went away. It's actually funny, off screen on my way to this bit place, uh, driving across a bridge, and this game has a tendency for cops to spawn running across the street. I've told you about this before. Uh, this is something people complain about in the Grand Theft uh, Auto the forums and whatnot when comparing the games. One of the big complaints about Vice City is cops spawn just randomly all over the place, and you end up running them over and getting a wanted level. And actually killing a cop gives you a two-star right away, I believe. You know I've been loyal. But, um, so we have no cars in the car dealership, and, uh, my big question with this, honestly, is, so they, they kind of make it out right away, like, oh, you steal cars, and the car dealership is a front, I guess, for your car theft business. I mean, what I'm not real clear on, and I'll show you here how the car dealership works, is, um, it gives you, well, A, you have access to street races now. I don't think that's there otherwise. You have a free pay and, pay and spray, which is nice. I don't think, established 1977. What a coincidence. That's, uh, whatever, never mind. Um, you get four garages, which is nice. That's more than you get at any of your uh, safe houses. But the main thing is this. You have... Vehicles wanted. Landstalker, Idaho, Esperanto, Stallion, Rancher, Blista Compact. So what I did is I, you know, and, and with the chemo, I, I am allowing myself a vice, as it were. Hey, Vice City. Um, something I'd, I'd uh, quit doing a while back, and now I'm like, fuck it. I'm in the middle of fighting cancer. I'm allowed to have vices to help me stay sane. So uh, on alternating weekends, I'm uh, allowing myself to... Relax, some bourbon and coke. Probably a little more than one or two bourbon and cokes sometimes. But the point I'm getting at is that, yeah, so I need a game to play while I'm, uh... I've been playing different games, uh, you know, because I'm kind of on my own, just uh, having some adult beverages, need a game to play. And, uh, like, a couple weeks ago at this point, it feels like, anyway. Yeah, it's like, it's like a Friday night, I'm watching Lethal Feline Stream, but my internet connection is terrible, so I can... It's, barely possible to, to even follow his stream, but while I'm doing that, I'm just driving around the city, stealing all these vehicles, and the Esperanto took forever, longer than any of the others put together. Interestingly, so you do this, and uh, and it, it, when you clear it, you get a cash bonus and a new car in your dealership, and your dealership starts uh, generating a small amount of cash, and a new list of cars appears. And... Uh, so what you saw there was kind of like the crap cars. Then the new list of car, new list appears. It's got more like slightly more high end, like mid range cars. You get all of them, and one called the Virgo took a longer than the uh, longer than the others because, like the Esperanto and the Virgo are relatively rare, because um, they're variations on a more common car. Like the the Esperanto is a variation on the Idaho. It shows up in a lot of places in the game, but um, they're cheap and. They, there's no place in the game where they just always spawn. Then the third list was actually the like one of the easiest ones because the third list was like super high end sports cars, and almost all of them uh, there's like a specific place in the game where there always is one, and you know it might be it might have a car alarm that goes off when you try to steal it, uh, but like there's Starfish Island where the mansions are had most of those cars, and now we're, this is the fourth and final list. And this is just weird ones. So the Voodoo is the specifically Haitian gang car. 
the Cuban Hermes is specifically the Cuban gang car. There's a regular little car called the Hermes, but the Cuban Hermes is the gang car. Caddy, you have to steal off the golf course. And actually, that one was kind of interesting because there's like, in order to get the caddy out of the golf course, there's a couple of places where there's ramps and you can get speed and uh, jump with a caddy uh, over the golf course walls. And then baggage handler is at the airport. I don't think I've ever shown one on screen. There's nothing really exciting or impressive about them. Um, so this one, it takes a little bit of time because some of these, like the caddy and the baggage handler, are really slow and you got to drive them a long way. But otherwise, they're, you know, whatever. So now I've got two left, which I've already got, because I just wanted to complete this off camera, or on camera, but I did all the work off camera. I've gotten Mr. Whoopi already, because I've already bought the Mr. Whoopi asset, and a Pizza Boy. I don't know why I'm bothering with the radio. So I, I honestly don't know. Tell me what you guys think. I'm assuming that they, the point of you stealing these vehicles is that he's sec- that we're running a chop shop is what it is. We're stealing cars to get parts for a car repair business. That makes more sense than we're stealing cars and then reselling them. I know it's I know the game series is called Grand Theft Auto, but that just stealing cars and then trying to resell sell the stolen cars. Seems like a way to get caught by the cops really quickly. <laughs> Delivered like a pro. Complete the list and there'll be a bonus for you. But yeah, that seems like a really dumb criminal em- enterprise that will get you caught. Um, but, you know, I mean, I guess if you're stealing cars and selling them, like, specific cars to specific buyers who place their orders before you steal the car. But, like, just keeping a car sales lot stocked with... Stolen cars just seems like something would get you caught. Uh, Chop Shop makes more sense, although then it's like it's just a it's just a game. I shouldn't be overthinking it, but like you know, Mr. Whoopi, like you specifically need a Mr. Whoopi for your Chop Shop business. Seems weird. All the cars, nice. Here's a little something. So you get a stock car. You get the stock car, which I believe is the same one you use in the stock car race at the uh, arena. Which somebody really wants me to go back and do that. I guess I will. I'm a little surprised that people are that interested in seeing the stock car stuff. But um, that's it. We don't get another... um, There's no additional cinematic. We just, after that, uh, this dealership now generates 9,000, which is one of the highest of any of our assets but it's also kind of in a section of town where it's kind of far away from anything else i guess the cherry popper ice cream is pretty nearby and you know what the um oh the printing press did i buy that off screen Oh, I might have bought that off screen by mistake. I bought it off screen just because I was curious to see what the cinematic looked like. But oh, you know what? I, I, I there's no cinematic when you buy it. You just uh, that's one. There's no cinematic when you buy it. I think there's a cinematic when you do your first mission. Uh, but anyway, yeah. Okay, so I was about to say it's kind of this, the car lot is kind of out of the way, and it's not some place you'd be visiting often. But eh, it's close to the cherry popper ice cream and the. And the docks down there, but the cherry popper ice cream and the docks don't generate a lot of money, so they're really not worth stopping by and getting money from that frequently. The um, so these cars, I don't remember what order they appear in, but uh, as you complete a list of cars, cars starts uh, generating in the dealership, and those are unique. All those cars you can't get anywhere else. Uh, stock car racer. Probably the most fun is this is a um, souped-up high-speed land stalker called Sand King, which is like for, I guess it would be for, um, I guess you would use this for like rally racing? I don't know. But I mean, some of these other, these other cars are nice, but this one, like, I just, I'm assuming it has more free what insurance? Wowee, free insurance. But I'm thinking this one probably is more durable. Which is important because I'm beating the shit out of it just trying to get it out. 
Anyway, let me go confirm that uh, the fir that buying the printing press off screen didn't cause us anything. By when I see the mission brief, I'll know for sure whether it's um, I'll know for sure whether we're going to miss anything because um, because the first the I remember the scene where you meet the guy who runs the printing press and we very much it's very clear uh, from the dialogue that this is the first time Tommy's meeting this person so if we go try to do a mission for that and that's how it that's how it comes off then I'll know oh okay Um, and if we go do a mission and, and they're talking to each other as though they already know each other, then I'll, uh, I'll need to go back and find a different save slot or something so that we can buy it on. So yeah, see, I guess I had grabbed this cash uh, at some point off screen fairly recently. We also don't have the gang missions. Uh, the Haitian gang missions got started... You have to do the first Cuban mission to get the Haitian gang mission to even show up. So let's go see what this mission looks like. But the Haitians... It's kind of a problem to be... hanging around in this zone. Why are you hitting me, ass? But anyway, no need for ambulances. I've already cleared the ambulance missions. Thank you very much. I don't actually want to finish this entire mission train, though, because that I want to kind of leave this one near the end. Yeah, okay. I think this is. I think we didn't miss anything by buying this off screen. I think the first cinematic is triggered by the first mission. Not all of them work like that. Mr. Bassetti? Hey, you bought the old print works? Yeah, my old man used to work on these. I used to spend the evenings with him cleaning the rollers. I was gonna follow him in his trade, but I lived a different life. You became you a good fellow. The old machinery, breaking it down. I'm thinking we might print something—a newspaper, a magazine. Oh crap, Sonny! Low-grade crap. I've always fancied printing money. It ain't too hard. You know, I've been doing it on a small scale for years. Really? Sure. <laughs> Since Tommy is immediately place. interested. Of course. There's a counterfeiting syndicate already operating in Florida. A syndicate? Yeah, with just rumors is all I've heard. I know a man who's good with rumors. So I like that we're just like immediately, like, it, it's kind of the, the most, um, what's the word I'm looking for, like, wholesome? We have this little moment of of Tommy talking about his dad. It's the first sense we really get of Tommy as a person outside of, you know, he's a uh, Liberty City wise guy. Um, that, like, you know, he's a little sentimental about his about his dad, who, you know, based on that dialogue, I think it's pretty, it sounds pretty likely that Tommy's uh, father is, is dead. And uh, he's, you know, he's just kind of sentimental thinking about how, you know, I can start up a fall in family business. And then immediately it's like, nope, nope, fucking counterfeiting. <laughs> going to be about counterfeiting so we don't want to finish this uh this this mission train because it will actually um the prerequisites for the final plot missions are a little unclear and um i mean you can take a wild guess at what the final plot missions are going to be about but there is kind of a threat still looming over us that we haven't uh, dealt with yet um that might eventually uh, rear its head but um in order to actually trigger that, you must complete these missions because um, the fact that you can counterfeit money actually enters into the story at that point. All the other assets are not specifically required. I believe you have to do a certain number of asset missions. Um, so, like, you don't specifically have to do uh, Cherry Pop or Ice Cream or the Film Studio or whatever. Um, and I know you don't need to do the Malibu. And I've actually – I've already gotten started on the Malibu missions. But part of me is thinking I should have um, – yeah, now that we've got Kyle Flynn's cab, too, I can just take a cab straight, too. But um, 
I guess we'll do the mission now that I've started, but... Part of me is thinking I should have just, um... Left the Malibu until the end, because, um... I don't want to spoil anything about the ending missions, but, um... I, I eventually realized, oh, they carefully selected the cast... Like, most of the cast members in that mission are new. Um... Because it's it's set up so that it can take place before or after the, the final story missions. There's not a lot of people who are affected by the final story who are involved in the caper uh, that you plan at the Malibu. I mean, I guess you know, you know now Kent Paul is going to come out of all this alive, but he hadn't been a part of the story in a long time. And everyone else involved in that caper is a new character that never appears before. So... Yeah. Crash. And somebody is pinging me in... Uh, I did not bother to close Discord, and now I'm getting little noises when someone says something in Discord, which is annoying. Also, my nose is itching like crazy. It's, uh, I have the chemo this time. It's got a different side effect. This time it's like skin stuff. I'm itchy. Itching like crazy. Okay. Oh, girls, you couldn't... She's not mate. You call men mate, don't you? What do you know about counterfeiting? Oh, I'm fine, Paul. How about you? Come here. Yeah, come on, Tommy. You'd be... Catch more flies with honey. Fuck. They've got a shipping company down the docks. Uh, uh, the boss man would know when the plates are coming in next. Thanks, Paul. What's the matter with you, you maniac? Give me another drink, lively. Where's that slot? Oh, that was a different one. I don't know what it is with Rockstar hating people from um, the British Isles, but yeah, Tommy and Kent Paul's relationship is very much a 20th century version of uh, John Marson and Irish. <laughs> it's like every time uh, Marson shows up he just starts screaming abuse at Irish, whether Irish has actually been helpful or not. Difficult to comprehend why uh, Kent Paul is actually helping Tommy at this point, other than just straight up being afraid of him. Um, there's no indication that... I guess uh, yeah, he brought, he brought Tommy in to meet Love Fist, which seemed like you know, they were rock stores. Like, it's kind of, um... Okay, so we got to go all the way back to that. So this is annoying. They make us drive around the whole freaking island. They're back and forth on both islands for this, this story mission. Like, can't we just call Kent Paul on a cell phone? It's the 80s. They could have made a big deal out of how, like, huge and impractical Kent Paul's cell phone is. Anyways. I think the engine maybe got damaged by some of the rough driving, because this thing, I thought, could go a bit faster than this, and it's certainly making some uh, rough noises. Actually, it's pretty, f it's moving pretty fast, though. Alright, so we're going to go talk to the boss of the counterfeiting syndicate, and try to... I'm not clear. Are we going to steal their plates, or are we going to try to cut a deal with them, or what? It's, um... I don't know exactly what's going to happen here. <laughs> Honestly, the Colt usually treats us better than anything else. You guys are not fighting like security guards. Alright, 
boy, what the hell? Are they spawning infinitely? Because I'm trying to get to my... Um, where the hell, what the hell happened to my uh, sniper rifle? Okay. Looks like I'm going to hard fail this mission. Yes, I think I don't have a sniper rifle. Because that's... There was a guy up at the top who was still shooting at me. That's who I was trying to get. Now I've got like... A less... Well, with 150. Got less than a quarter health and all my armor's gone just from fucking around. Oh, well, I'm dead. Yeah, so, okay, that didn't go particularly well. But uh, to tell you the truth, um, I wasn't entirely uh, dedicated to doing those missions yet anyway. Now that I've started down that road, um, part of me wants to go back and do it. I think there's more than one mission in that mission tree. But honestly, I really just wanted to make sure that um, I hadn't accidentally messed up by not doing that asset properly off screen. So, oh, not to mention, I, never, I didn't save after finishing this, so I don't even have the full car dealership thing set up. So, we're going to call it a video and just consider this the video where we, you know, one mission failure, which we're going to, I'm not even going to go back and redo that mission next time. We will, um, we will come back for that another day. Instead, when we come back next time, I think my plan is to try to get keep going forward with the... Um, with the... Um, I don't want to get a copyright strike. That's what V-Rock tends to do. But we'll go forward instead next time with um, missions related to that caper. Trying to finish those off instead. Uh, I am the Mysterious JG. I want to thank you guys very much for watching, and I hope you'll join me next time for more of Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Let me go ahead and save. I guess we'll either do Caper or, um, and I'm going to be recording, you know, before this goes public, so you won't have a chance to chime in. But um, I might go instead and do the races. Because somebody specifically uh, expressed interest in that. Anyway, I'm Serious JG. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys next time. And keep getting into the outro before I'm ready to quit out. Buh bye bye.